Hi there, this is Sally Ann Shimmer from the Casper Star Tribune and my new friend, Pat Christensen, owner of this delightful place that we are in, Kitchen Connections, downtown Casper, right across from the post office. We're going to be making for you today angel hair with chicken, artichokes, and lemon. It's a delightful spring dish. It's a one-pot meal, aside from the pasta that you're going to be making. We're using Pat's beautiful induction cooktop here, his 14-foot island, which is bigger than my my house at home, and I can hardly wait to show you how this beautifully finished dish is created. This makes a ton of, for hungry people, and it's the perfect spring dish for any time in spring, Mother's Day, Easter, whatever you'd like, perfectly company worthy. I can't wait to, take, to do this. So should we get started? Let's get to work. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. First thing we're doing is sauteing these chicken tenders, about a pound and a quarter. But, you know, measurements and I... I don't believe in them either. You know, one of my favorite gals to watch on the Food Network is Trisha Yearwood, and because I just love everything about her. And she aggravatingly doesn't measure anything on television, like nothing. So you're guessing. And then you can, of course, go online and get the recipes. But um, how do we turn this baby on? So, to about medium? On medium. Oh, that's pretty intuitive. So. <laughs> now, immediately, these are going to start to skizzle. Fancy knives. I hear you bought them for me, especially. I did. I didn't want you to have anything dull. I want to make sure everything's good for you. <laughs> and you'll notice I, I brought a lot of my own things, but I did not bring knives because my knives are. Um, and do you need any bigger bowls? Little, are we good little on those? fork. Little, little fork. fork? Just a regular fork. Perfect. That's how I, That's what I cook with at home. We're just going to saute these babies off. Now for seasoning, I brought a fun thing from home because I'm addicted to QVC. I like using seasoned salts, and I know people are familiar with lemon pepper. Uh, I didn't have any lemon pepper at home over the weekend, uh, so I used lemon salt and then just regular old-fashioned black pepper out of a can. And these just saute up beautifully. That's a good idea. Now, Patrick, I understand you're a griller extraordinaire, and you know you could grill the chicken for this recipe, and it would be just perfect for, especially for spring and summer, if you wanted to add a little grill flavor to the Italian pasta. There's nothing wrong with that either. Perfect. Ready that on hot heat or low heat? Um, this probably, I'm just having it on medium right now. Medium, and they're just going to sizzle and saute, and uh, then we'll throw some salt on the second side so that they brown up really nicely first, and we'll be good to go. Our ingredients for the recipe, the only things that people might not have in their pantry, um, most people might not have in their pantry, are capers, which are just little delicious little salt bombs, as you know, and uh, marinated artichoke hearts. And then the, the only other thing from the meat aisle that you might not be familiar with is the sliced prosciutto, which um, we're going to chop, and it crisps up just beautifully and adds some crunch and some more salt. This is a heavily salty recipe. So it's really good for my heart. It is great for your heart, good. but it's also, it keeps, you, it keeps you nice and hydrated as well. But also, this is, a very, this is a recipe that's eminently adaptable, as I think are most recipes these days. If you're not eating pasta or if you're eating gluten-free, you can choose gluten-free pasta. If you are in the zoodles craze, you can serve it over zoodles. It just doesn't matter. What the heck is a zoodle? Zoodle is <laughs> zucchini ribbons uh, made into oh, noodles. My wife makes those all the time. I don't eat those. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can buy them at the store pre prepared, and you can get zoodle. You can get zucchini, beets, carrots, butternut squash. You wouldn't be able to argue about it just making the zoodle. <laughs> That's right. Well, the zoodles are my least favorite of the four. But when you buy them prepackaged, then you just steam them. And you. And the, the, here's what I do at home, and she needs to learn this trick from me. You put whatever sauce you want to put over the vegetable noodles, and then they're hidden. And you wouldn't even, you don't even so know. I won't even know? You won't even, you don't even know. It's kind of like that spaghetti squash. You just, exactly. exactly. I don't get it. You put it exactly. in a squash why and is this, it comes out Why spaghetti? is this spaghetti? Right. It's a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle. All right, um, how about you want to chop up a little prosciutto? I will chop up some prosciutto. Okay, this 
is you're, we're going to use the entire package. Okay. It says that it's six ounces, and we're going to use every bit. And it's a little bit. It's not gross. I shouldn't. It is a little sticky. I shouldn't say gross. It's just very thin. And the way they package this is interesting because there's one of these sheets between every single one. Okay. So you do that, and I'll start on the lemon. Okay. Did you hand me that other knife? Yes. How big of pieces would you like? Um, kind of a rough chop, okay. but definitely chopped. Does that make sense? That makes sense. About three quarters inch. Perfect. I love having the garbage right here. That's yes. very, very handy. Lovely. This is a great island. This is perfect for every need. That well, I always say a 14-foot island is about the perfect size island. <laughs> Especially for two people. Yes. That's awesome. Okay, I'm just going to do a quick knife, wipe of this knife. Now, there's a fun hint with the lemons as well. I love fresh lemon in anything. I'm huge, huge, huge lemon eater. Huge fan of lemons. So this is a springtime recipe, perfect for any time in the spring. It would be lovely for Mother's Day because it's light and fresh and just feels like Mother's Day in spring. Easter dinner. Especially spring when you get 8 to 10 inches of snow. Exactly, which is coming as we speak, shortly after we finish. And I'm trying to get to Vegas. I'm trying to convince the driver that we should leave tonight, and the driver's not up on leaving tonight. Hey, you know, my last so. time I was in Vegas, it snowed. I know. <laughs> I was so lucky. <laughs> you were very fortunate. Yes, I mean, everybody goes to Vegas to see snow. Exactly. So we're de-seeding these lemons, which is interesting, but with this sharp knife, it's just very easy. And then when we get to that point of the recipe, I have a little story about the lemons. Little hint that I had no idea about till I cooked this recipe. So the origin of this recipe I'm happy to share because it involves one of our dearest friends, Brian Scott. Uh, I love that man. Um, when back in the day when K2 Radio and the Star Tribune were co cooperating, we um, did the we co-hosted the Taste of Home cooking show. And I'm a big fan of Taste of, of Home. For those who don't know, I can't believe there are any who don't know, but it's a book publishing company and a magazine company out of Wisconsin, which I'm very fond of. And it cook, and they specialize in what I like to call real recipes. There's nothing, the ingredients are not very foofy. Um, they're easy to find, even in Wyoming rural grocery stores. They're very hearty. They still use cream soups, which I think I could have stock in the Campbell Soup Company. I use so much cream soup in my recipes. So, long story short, in the spring of 2010, they came to the Casper Event Center for their um, cooking demonstration show, which is very popular. And Brian and I, as we often did, co-hosted together. And we were sitting to the side because the star demonstrator wanted nothing to do with the two of us. And so we were sitting to the side watching her cook this recipe. And the smell, even in, in the event center, of the garlic combined with the lemon just wafted. I mean, it was just a sensational smell. And Brian leaned over to me, and I'll never forget this. He leaned over to me, and he said, that looks like Sunday dinner to me. <laughs> and I said, yes, it does. And then, of course, we were given a copy of a book with the recipe in it that evening. Uh, this particular recipe was sponsored by Gallo Family Vineyards. Um, so if you could pick up a nice Gallo Chardonnay for the recipe, that would be dandy. Um, was Brian drinking bourbon or, or Chardonnay? Uh, he was drinking, I think, bourbon because there was an open bar at the event, which made the gals wanting learning to cook all the more excited about what they were learning. Um, Is this about the right size for you? Oh, that's perfect, Pat. Thanks so much. And these are browning up beautifully. See, these just take no time at all to just saute, and, and it's so much easier than rotisserie chicken. You can, you know, you can roast your chicken breasts in the oven if that's your thing. If you're into the um, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which so much of America is these days, you can use those. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of this fancy salt. Now, I don't use a lot of that's fancy. That's lemon pepper salt? It is. Yes. It's lemon salt made by Saltopia. And I have not ever, I've not seen it locally. If it's available locally, that's fantastic. Uh, it's you can order it online, and they have all kinds of different salts. This one just has a tiny little bit of lemon zest, so I thought it would just be perfect. Pretend there's black pepper on there because I forgot my black pepper. 
Would you like some black pepper? I would love some black pepper. Got some black pepper right here. Oh, look at you. Well, I try to, you Mr. Know, spice Cabinet. Maybe it's in the other Spice Cabinet. Try the other cabinet. Wow. I bet this would be, yes? Black pepper. Black pepper. Beautiful. Perfect. Now we don't have to pretend. And look at that. Okay, so we've got the chopped prosciutto. Got the sliced lemon. With no seeds in it. No seeds in the lemons. Uh, we are really rolling. What we're going to do is, is take off the chicken when it's fully sautéed, and I know that we're going to be eating this, so I want to be certain that it's fully sautéed. Then we're going to start building the sauce in the same pan, um, and, and that's just the ingredients that you see here, some olive oil, the capers, um, minced garlic, and I, you know, I'm a huge fan of garlic, so we'll use a lot of minced garlic in I'm this glad particular I don't have to recipe. Top Right. Well, well we have to top clove after clove after clove. Right, and that's the one thing that I did buy to simplify matters was the mint, the garlic already minced. Um, so we're just going to use in some olive oil. We're just going to use the garlic, the marinated artichoke hearts, and the capers, and let that kind of marry all together. And then the wine, and then it's really a simple recipe. Do we and need then, a glass for the wine? No. No. Well, oh, it's for the cooking. Might. Okay. Might. For the cooking. You might want a glass for, for it to... Are we leaving the chicken drippings in there for the sauce? Or are we cleaning the pan afterwards? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. I cleaned the pan at home, and I don't see any reason why we can't leave it in there just because I already added a tiny dash of olive oil before I began. So I think that would be flavorful like and I tasty. say, it's free flavor. Exactly. Free, fla free flavor. Free flavor. Don't stutter. Get that free flavor whenever you can. And this guy over here on the end is not... Wanting to be in the same color family. I'm worried about this one. Did not get as brown as I would have liked. Maybe we'll... Now, how would I jack up the heat a little so bit, Pat? Which, which one direct you want? Do the plus button? Okay. Higher? Oh, yep. Yeah. There we go. Oh, baby. I'll have to watch it now. Yep. Okay. So the easy just push down if you want it a little bit cooked down. I love the sound of the cooking. A lot of times at home, I don't have anybody to talk to except the dog, and she gets really annoyed with me just jabbering at her constantly. But I found out Sunday when my other came over, specifically at Dale's invitation to watch me cook, um, that I lose track of what I'm doing when I'm talking. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know really how this cooking cooking live is going to work because I kind of so lose track of myself. Well, I'm thank you, Pat. Thank you. It, this is just really delicious. And and folks, will, and you, when I was talking about how adaptable it was earlier on, uh, the other thing is people always want to know exactly how many people they can count on serving. Well, that's so variable because you don't know um, the appetites of those you're serving, for one thing. Um, in my house, when I was growing up with my dad and my brother, and me and my mom and my sister, you know, my mom would cook for five and she was really cooking for 10. And I didn't realize that at first until people started getting grumpy with my portions in my recipes. They'd say, you said it made four and it made like for 12. And I was like, well, well we went home on three, didn't they? <laughs> exactly. And you can always eat leftovers. I'm a huge proponent of leftovers and not wasting an ounce of your delicious food. Um, but in any case, as an example, this is about one and a half pounds of chicken. You could certainly increase the, the amount of chicken. Um, likewise, the <laughs> pasta, it calls for half a box of pasta, which I think is kind of odd. And so if you're, if you're, if you're serving more, just throw in more pasta. It's not rocket science. I mean, I am the worst math and science girl there is. I mean, God bless STEM and God bless the girls who are all into STEM, but that's just not me. And I... You know, I don't measure a lot, and I don't, you know, if, if you want to use a whole box of pasta, use a whole box of pasta. This is else, not... have enough to for lunch the next time. Exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah, now see, when we when we jacked the heat on this beautiful stovetop, it really did the trick here. And we're just going to be lifting momentarily, and we'll lift right over to that. You want anything cleared off? Um, I was wondering... Perhaps I'll just move the lemons. Let me let me set them in this pretty little. I even have another cutting board. Well, oh, that's great. So it even says oh, meat. that's perfect. Let's just use that then. 
You are so prepared. I'm trying to be. Yeah. I didn't want to get yelled at. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I would never yell at you. I'm just delighted that you agreed to host this. We're so happy to be here in this beautiful oh, kitchen perfect. of yours. Don't they look just delicious? That little lemon salt and that black pepper. You Yum. Totally smell oh, that wow. lemon. That lemon smells really good. Yum. Oh. My dexterity is being tested. Look at that. Woo! Woo! Now you can just kind of rough, you want to rough, rough chop those for you me? You betcha. You betcha. That would be delightful. It's great to have a hand in the kitchen. I am going to measure. Uh, what happened to the measuring spoons I brought, I wonder? Do we know? I brought some measuring spoons. Hello. Guessing right over here. Mr. Off Air. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Yeah. I brought two tablespoons because I have two tablespoons, and I like one for the oil and then one for the other stuff. Although, as we mentioned, there's a lot of oil in both the marinated artichoke hearts as well as the capers. Perfect. Thank you for assisting us with that, Marvin. You're such a good guy. He's good at something. Okay. Now, I'm, I am going to refer to my recipe just because I don't want to steer people wrong. So we're heating the one tablespoon olive oil in a large saute pan over medium heat. Um, we went back. Now, it's, this just says hot. Did we turn this off? Uh, yes, turn it on. So we turn it on. And, and then, then touch it wherever you want on. it to be. Oh, wow. I mean, it's that easy. Wow. That's an induction cooktop. I mean, it, it works off a magnet. It's not, so it, it, it gets the perfect cook. It cooks just like gas, but you don't have the, especially when we're done, cleaning this up is going to be a lot easier than cleaning it up on a gas cooktop. That's just fantastic. So at Pat's suggestion, because he is a, he is a good cook, we know that, and he has more common sense than I do. We left the browned bits of, from the chicken saute in the bottom of the pan, and that's just going to work beautifully with the rest of the sauce. So that's one less pan to wipe out or wash. Plus, I don't like cleaning anything up. Exactly. And now we're going to take this beautiful prosciutto, beautiful prosciutto, tissue paper thin, but oh so salty and delicious. It's got a good amount of fat on it because I didn't go to an Italian butcher. I went to the big box instead. So that's just going to crisp up beautifully in the olive oil. Here we go. You want any tongs or anything to? Um, I used a wooden spoon at home, but any anything will work perfectly. That's just perfect. I mean, it's like bacon almost, isn't it? It is. It is. It's really, really salty and tissue paper thin and. You, I don't think, you know, it's on a lot of charcuterie plates. How about that word? Charcuterie? Charcuterie. I can never say the name. Charcuterie. In fact, we had it on a charcuterie plate the other evening. I call it meat and cheese. And my friend is not was not a fan of it. He said it's just too fatty. He said it's got good flavor, but it's just too fatty. So he took it home and rendered all the fat out and put it between a hamburger bun with some mustard. He said it was the best sandwich he's had in a month. So there you go. All well, right. I don't get a body like this from not eating fat. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to cook the prosciutto uh, to just to lightly brown, which is not going to take very long with this beautiful stovetop. And we're just going to do like this because we don't want it to all stick. And then this, this recipe honestly goes together quite quickly. There are 13 ingredients, which for a cooking with salad recipe is probably double what I usually. And so I thought that this meant that it was a really, really hard recipe. Well, it's not really hard. It's just really delicious. And honestly, even though it's, even though it's pasta, it's um, fancy enough for company. I mean, I would serve this to company for sure. Um, a lot of Wyoming guys aren't big pasta fans, but if you put enough meat in the sauce, I don't know why they would have a complaint with this dish especially. And about accompaniments, I always like to tell people what I would serve with this. I would serve a beautiful green salad with a nice, light, springy vinaigrette. And then because I'm part Italian and part Polish, Bread is a significant part Bread of my life. Meal, isn't it, though? <laughs> Bread is a significant part of my life. And so uh, just a beautiful rustic loaf of Italian or French. And if you want to warm it in the oven and serve it with a lot of butter, then you got your meal right Once there. Again, butter's really good for you, too, isn't yep. it? Yep. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. And at the end, uh, stay tuned, as they say, because at the end I'm going to tell you what I would make for dessert with this. I'm not going to show you, but I'm going to tell you. Did because you bring any samples of what you would make? I did not. I mean, because really, we can skip right to the dessert I right think now. Dale will be quite upset that I did not bring samples of the dessert. But it's, it's uh, whereas this is 13 ingredients, the 
dessert is three ingredients, which is definitely a Sal kind of recipe. But I digress, and we're not going to confuse the issue with We food. had a fondue party this weekend. How was that? It was I, amazing. I hear that that is really taking off in Casper. Well, this would be our fifth year doing it. And then we had more people. We had 10 people this year, which 10 people around the table with fondue is a lot of fun. Fun. And the dessert. I just love the dessert. We okay. still have it. Now tell me about, my man is convinced that he would not get full at a fondue dinner. Well, tell, he tell, can get as full as he wants because we, we make these gigantic platters. So I make a huge platter. Uh, on ours, we have steak, chicken, shrimp. I did tuna this year, but Ooh. tuna cooks pretty quick, so you got to be quick with that. Okay. Um, all the vegetables, the mushrooms, what else do you have? Just a whole smorgasbord of food. And we start off with appetizers, which is uh, meats and cheeses. That takes about a half an hour. And then we start with uh, get the oils all hot and do all the meat, uh, you know, your wow. steaks and chickens yep. and everything. The whole meal takes about two and a half hours. That's fantastic. And you're eating the whole time. And, and you're all sitting together all talking. Sitting together to oh, that's beautiful. Instead of the men in one room and the women in another room, right. I hate that. And then the dessert, my goodness. You got, you got brownies, you got <sighs> cookies. And then my wife made this amazing chocolate, which was really good when it was hot and gooey and you uh -huh. your stuff in. But now I'm using it like butter. <laughs> so I'll get a cookie and I'll butter <laughs> chocolate the chocolate butter. on top hey, of it. What, what could possibly be wrong with chocolate butter? Uh. Okay, so you see how this is crisped up really beautifully? Um, almost all of that tissue paper fat has been rendered out. That's just going to be beautiful. You want to be patient, which is not, I am not a patient cook. People think I'm a great cook, which I appreciate, but I am not a patient cook. Uh, you want to be patient and you want this to get really nice and crispy. Because then the complaint that my friend rent, uh, offered is... Not valid because then you won't even be able to find the little bits of fat that are in this. And besides, I have to that's agree, all. Raw prosciutto is not my favorite. It's it's not. And, and when and, you cook it or right. put it on a burger, it's delicious. Exactly. And on a charcuterie plate, it's not my favorite either. And I wonder why they think it's so fancy that they should put it on there because my last one, they actually cut it thicker. Oh. And it wasn't so darn hard to pull apart. Yeah. That's the thing I hate about it. You put a small yeah. piece, you got a big piece, and you end up. Yep. Having to put the whole thing in your mouth at once and chew it and chew it and chew yeah. it. Well, Pat, thanks for being my my cut-up chef over yes. there. That was very helpful. Um, if you wanted to do one more thing for yes. us, would you like to get that pasta pot and fill it about three-quarters with water? Right here in front of us. That'll be perfect. And while you're getting the pasta water ready... I'm going to do the two tablespoons of additional olive oil. So we've used three tablespoons of olive oil plus a juge, as they say. Juge. Juge is one of my favorite kitchen words. The juge, the juge was for sautéing the, the chicken tenders in this beautiful nonstick pan. And I know that people would say, oh, you don't need olive oil with the pan. But, you know me, I like a little extra flavor. A little extra oil never hurt anybody. One tablespoon of butter. Well, you need butter and everything, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I learned a term that evening when I was watching with Brian that I've never forgotten. At the end, we're going to add butter to, quote, gloss the sauce. Have you ever heard of that? I have not. I've never <laughs> glossed my sauce. <laughs> I highly recommend glossing your sauce. There's one tablespoon butter right there. Now my hands are all icky again. Thank goodness I blew up this recipe so I can actually read it. I'm so excited. I can almost take my glasses off. <laughs> the producers wanted the recipe like way out there on a chart. I'm like, nope, not for this girl. Okay, here we go. Garlic. Two tablespoons of minced, already pre-minced garlic. Woo, get ready for the smell. Notice my tablespoons are not exactly what you'd call tablespoons. They're more like ta a little extra tablespoons and a half. I don't know. I would be a little afraid to use that much. But <laughs> on a dare, I probably would. And then artichoke hearts, marinated artichoke hearts. Now, these come in a lot. This is a large, tall jar. They also come in a half-size jar. And the recipe calls for a half-size jar. 
So I bought one large jar to, for my practice round as well as for this, and I'm going to throw all of these artichoke hearts in here. And you're asking now, Sal, why don't you just be quick and drain it over in a colander over the sink? And the reason that I'm not draining it in a colander over the sink is because this artichoke heart marinade makes a delicious salad dressing. Honestly, honestly, even for this meal. So we can save it for this if meal you and actually just, make this dressing. If you just put the freshest greens you have in a beautiful bowl with whatever accompaniments you want to use for your, your tossed salad. And tossed salads to us are not that fancy. They're just green and fresh and delicious. Then you take this little jar of oil and you put some extra things in there like some, you know, chopped um, shallots if you like shallots, which I do not. But if you like shallots, you can use sh shallots, little dill, little, little bit of lemon juice, although this is kind of a lemon heavy meal. Shake that baby up and that's perfect dressing right there. It sounds good. So how about that? Okay, check myself here. Olive oil, butter, garlic, capers, and artichoke hearts. Capers are capers, fabulous. Capers, that's just uh, salty, isn't it? Just salty. Just little tiny salt, salt bombs. Little tiny green salt bombs. And people who say they don't like capers. As they put salt on their meal. Exactly. Capers, capers, capers. Plus they add a little green color, so you can't go wrong with that. Are there black capers too? I, I believe that they are, that there are. I could not speak to that personally perfectly, but I believe that there are. Now we're finished with the capers. Got it. And, and you will find both the capers and the artichoke hearts um, sometimes with the vegetables, but also sometimes with the condiments. So fear not. If you don't find them one place, look at the other place. So this is our beautiful sauce. And really, you we're, can smell the garlic now. We're literally almost finished. These artichoke hearts come out of the jar kind of large. Of course, you can chop them rougher if you'd like them smaller, but I like them big because I love artichoke hearts. And again, I don't like I have people who don't eat artichoke hearts, then honey, leave them out. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to get fined by the artichoke police if you don't add them. I'm not allowed to cook with mushrooms at my house because my daughter refuses to eat them. Well, that's ridiculous. When she was under my roof, she ate them four times a week. And who doesn't like mushrooms? And then, well, my daughter is, doesn't, is weird. She doesn't like mushrooms now. But I don't like, I don't eat cilantro, which makes people in Wyoming crazed. So I understand her angst at not eating mushrooms. You don't, I don't have eat. salsa a lot. I have my own salsa, which doesn't contain cilantro, which people think is so ridiculous. But, you know, it's me. I my didn't. wife loves to buy cilantro. She doesn't like to use it very often, but she Ooh. loves to buy it every week, and we just don't use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remind me not to eat salsa at her house. I know. She would sneak some in. And I would say, what is this green stuff? And she'd say, oh, parsley. Hopefully it's the fresh stuff, not the old stuff. <laughs> exactly. All right. Wine time. I would say a little bit for the cook, but I'm going back to the office and I don't want to get fired. Well, you can stay so, at this office. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> One cup of, I use Chardonnay, any, any kind of dry white wine. You don't want a really sugary wine in this, I don't think. And see, there's some left for the cook. Um, okay, lemon slices. Here comes the magic. Okay. All right. We're going to count. This is the only thing about this recipe that we have to count. Plus, I, to count. I see a rogue seed. Look at that. There's a rogue seed right there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's just oh. about right. That's a regular size lemon. And um, it, the recipe suggests quarter inch thick. And so that's just about right. Eight slices. Now, what's, the reason we counted, this is kind of fun. I didn't know until I went to the cooking demo nine years ago now. Boy, it seems like it wasn't nine years. But anyway, um, the lemon pulp will melt away. Did you know that? I did not know that. Lemons actually melt in heat. So uh, it's a pretty thing to watch. It's a pretty thing. And we'll, we'll show, of course, the finished product here. This is the part that takes the longest camera people. I don't know if you care about that. 
This will be about three they minutes. They care about everything you say. This is. This will be about three minutes that we'll just watch this do its thing. And now, and this is on, Pat? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, looks like we're starting to do a little something on That's the perfect. That's perfect. Um, I don't use angel hair a lot because I tend to like a sturdier, firmer pasta. And we eat a lot of pasta at our house. Um, but with angel hair, the thing that you want to be careful of if you also don't use it uh, frequently is that it literally takes four to five minutes to cook. That's it. And um, after that, you're going to have pasta that's overcooked. So you'll want to be really careful, especially if you're chatting and drinking wine with your sous chef. You want to be really careful that your pasta... Only on the second bottle of wine, though. The first <laughs> bottle of wine, we can still be okay on. <laughs> exactly. Does not, does not overcook. Um, so we're going to time this so that everything is kind of ready at the same time. So why did we count to eight again? Uh, so that we can remember how many lemon rinds to take out. Huh. So unless only one want, bottle of wine. Then. Unless you want it to be really rustic, yeah. and then I suppose you could serve it with lemon rinds. Well, but heck you know, of a death. I know <laughs> exactly. There are, I mean, I mean, there are, there are people who are forgiving, and then there are people who are going to be like, "What did I just bite into?" What? Lemon rind. That's what that was. Let me go get the strainer. Perfect. You can smell the garlic over here. Excellent. And I'm just cubing up a little bit more butter now because we're going to gloss the sauce at the end with additional butter when we when we place the chicken back in to that's a lot um, of gloss for the sauce warm up it is it is but that's exactly what the recipe calls for so so are we now wait, waiting and watching the water boil we're, we're watching the water boil boil and if I was at home I would sit down and go ah, and have a glass of wine um, do we need any oil in the water? I no. don't. I don't do that. Okay. And also, I've heard, by the by, that if you oil the water, which I know a lot of people believe in, then the sauce doesn't stick as well. Ah, have you heard of that? I have not heard that. Okay. Okay. There you go. This is watching pots don't boil, but they also prevent big spillovers, which are a mess to clean up. That's what I like about the induction cooktop. It's flat and easy to clean compared to my gas cooktop, which would take me forever to clean. Exactly. Or I'll just leave it dirty, one of the two. <laughs> well, if you're going to use it again, my point is if you're going to use it again, why would you? Cleaning clean? once is tough enough. Exactly. I mean, so just keep it going. Exactly. So you may wonder what else is on this counter. We have, we have big, big shreds of Parmesan cheese, which I like, as opposed to the finely grated stuff that you can't really see or taste. So that's going to be that we're going to finish the dish with that, as well as as uh, some parsley like that, that is all? not cilantro. Yes, sir, I would love it if you would chop that for me. I'm getting spoiled. You're chopping everything. I know. And mostly this is just for pretty garnish, so just those pretty little leaves. And that's a lot of parsley, but. Smells pretty good. You boys hungry? Well, you can't yes. have any. <laughs> Although whoever does this, it gets to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pity whomever has to edit this baby, but I don't think I've sworn yet, which is good. Shocking. <laughs> This is not the Grammys. I don't think we have to worry about that. Oh, not yet. <laughs> I think I got most of the, uh, most of the stems out. Oh, perfect. And we'll just hold on to that. And then when we present at the end, in my favorite pasta bowl that I brought with me, I never get to use it because generally speaking, it's only two of us and we just serve from the stove because we're kind of rednecks. Have you been doing that HelloFresh? Oh, are you enjoying that? Good. Good. <laughs> See, you know, you know, the thing that's lost on me about those, and I probably need to give them a try to be fair. Um, 
I really love to cook and I never worry about what I'm going to cook because I cooking is my is the, my the main I mean obviously if you look at me cooking is what I do is what I do and thinking about food is my my passion so I don't people say oh it's really great cuz otherwise you just I just can't ever think of what to cook honestly I've just never had that problem I agree with that now I don't have to go to the store and pick up food well there you go there you go and it's like a surprise every night right and each meal some take a little bit longer depending on how much time you have you just there you go. You there you go. And I don't know what she orders. She orders every week, so it's always. Well, that's fun. Well, there you go. So I'm gonna add the pasta now to the water because it's, it has a nice rolling boil. This is just half a box. This is the one pound box, and so I'm following cl more closely the recipe for the amount of pasta. If if we were feeding a giant gang, we would use the whole box and not even worry about it. Whoops. Okay, so the pasta is on. No you, drinking wine now. You have to pay attention. Do you have a kitchen timer? I do. Okay, we'll use my we'll use my watch. I got a phone. Four to five. No, we're good. Four to five minutes. I I looked, so we'll be okay as long as I stop talking in time. Now this sauce has, while we were talking and we're worrying about the watch pot never boiling, the lemons are nearly melted. I see that now. I didn't know that actually happened. See, you it can actually learn does. Day. It actually does. And we have to pull out and eat them. <laughs> That's the hard part is remembering how we kill them. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this butter. And this is a lot of butter. If you are completely opposed to using this much better, don't. But the butter glosses the sauce. I'm just telling you. Don't eat at our house. I don't have, exactly. <laughs> I don't have, like, scientific proof, but I, but I believe the professional chefs who say, that butter glosses the sauce. And who am and I? Who doesn't like the sauce gloss? And who am I to question a perfect? No, no. That would be a little over the top. So we're going to. My wife gets grossed out because I keep my butter on the countertop. Well, it has to be for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because I mean, otherwise it rips the bread. The butter, it exactly. It rips the bread if you don't. I don't understand. And my grandparents, they're still doing good. <laughs> there you go. Never met a stick of butter they didn't like. Yeah, I was raised exactly the same way. I'm from that great Midwest her heritage. I was raised in Detroit. Both my parents are from Detroit, so those folks know how to eat. And then my mom spent the last 20 years of her life in Green Bay, and baby, those folks know how to eat. They kind of make the Detroit eaters look like JV, the JV team, honestly. My mom was more of a home cook on right out of the box. <laughs> she, uh, she really loved those box oh, oh dear. The first time I went to dinner with my uh, Well, you lived. It was weird eating that real mashed potato. <laughs> I never heard of anybody making a potato out of potatoes. Well, you lived eating those box mashed potatoes, so that's okay. But you know what, Pat? At least she cooked for you, and there's got to be something yeah, said for that. There you go. There yeah, you go. Weekly. There She's you really go. Good. That, that ragu sauce was really good. That ragu sauce. See, I love making spaghetti, but, you know, I make spaghetti sauce. I don't use a jar. I agree. When I was w trying to find a, a suitor many, many moons ago, I used to woo them with homemade spaghetti sauce, and they didn't th I didn't think it was any big deal because I'd say, come on for spaghetti, and they'd think, oh, it's just another jar of ragu. Every girl does that. Not this girl. My first meal I cooked for life was lasagna. Ooh, that's, that's, I was going to say, that's, that's big. I never knew the lemons did that. Lemons do this, and it's going to be kind of gross and a little bit sticky, but I'm going to show, show the camera here as I'm, wow, oh, that's just too hot. Fork? Right. Nope, we got a fork, right here. A little bit. Okay, camera person, let me get a good example. Yep, just went in a lemon, and it comes out. Boom. Proof. Melt melts in the sauce. How about that, huh? So now we're counting to eight. Is that correct? Seven. Eight. Two. Oh, three. You want somebody to get the king cake, baby, don't you? Four. Five. Ooh, there's a good piece of prosciutto. We don't want to waste that. Now, if I was at home, I'd use my fingers, aren't it? Oh, darn, he just wants to be attached to that lemon. 
Maybe they had a thing in the pan. Who knows? Oh, there's some good capers in that one, but we just can't be that fussy. Now I forgot, lost my count, too. You're on two. <laughs> you funny boy. Um, and, you know, you're going to be at home when you're doing this, so if you find one as you get ready to serve, just yank it out with your fingers. It's not the end of the world. And if somebody gets it, it's not the end of the world. It won't kill them. It's just a lemon rind. Okay, I think we're good. There we go. There are the lemon rinds for you. Now we're going to put the chicken in. And that pasta is just about ready yeah, to exactly lift. Three seconds. <laughs> I knew it. Good job. Oh there, I, goes. oh, there we go. See, look at me. I look like I know what I'm doing. You don't need a timer. Okay, would you like to uh, drain the pasta for me, Pat? Oh, Not that I'm incapable, but it's nice to have a man around. <laughs> oh, there's a sink back there, too. Wow, how. <laughs> oh, stop. Now that's just being mean. <laughs> Only kitchens designed by Kitchen Connections, Pat. How about that? How about that? Is that what you want me to say? Everybody needs two sinks in their cook kitchen and an induction stovetop and a 14-foot island thing, counter. This is bigger than my house. So when you design my kitchen, you're going to have to go down in size. because. big get no matter what you want, we can take care of it. <laughs> All right. Why don't we bring it over here? We're just about ready to finish this baby up. Now that's a good amount of chicken. Even guys who don't like pasta, even guys who say, oh, chicken again, where's my ribeye? This is a good amount of food. You got the prosciutto, you got the chicken. You cannot possibly go wrong here. But could we put beef in there instead? Of course you could put beef in there instead. Of course you could. You can do anything you want. It's your kitchen. You're We're the still in America. You're the kings and queens of your kitchen. You can do whatever the heck you want. All of you can. All right. Eaten with Sal Pottery by you bowl because I love that place and I painted it myself, brown and gold. Shocking. I know you're all shocked Go that Pokes. I paint. Go Pokes, baby. The world needs more cowboys. All right. So here's the angel hair pasta, cooked only four to five minutes because it's very, very thin. You do not want overdone pasta. Here is our beautiful sauce, and this pan is heavy. This is a quiz. I'm not going to ask you to name every ingredient, but I'm going to tell you. Chicken. Chicken, prosciutto, lemons, artichoke hearts, lots and lots and lots of garlic, capers. Did I get everything? Say seven slices of lemon. Eight slices Eight of slices lemon, of Patrick. Okay, there's that. Now for our voila finishing. Largely grated Parmesan cheese. That looks amazing. It is amazing. Little sprinkles of, go ahead, be my guest, sir. Thank you for your hospitality, Pat. Oh, this was just fantastic. It's just fantastic. There we go. And there you have angel hair with chicken, lemon, and artichoke pasta. Angel hair with chicken, lemon, and artichoke pasta. Say it backwards. No, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to tell you what, what I would make for, for dessert with this because everybody needs a little bonus Our recipe. Family. I did not today. Perhaps in the future. Desserts are my thing, honestly. I would, I would far rather make desserts than anything else. So this is a cake mix recipe, which there is not, nothing wrong with using a cake mix when the re ingredients, when the results are this good. Use one angel food cake mix in a box, one can, one can of lemon pie filling, and one cup of shredded coconut. Mix those three ingredients together, bake them off, they turn into a really thin, dense, dense bar. You put your favorite cream cheese frosting on top of that. Little lemon, lemon you're zest on the top. No, you're not going to really use okay. this lemon, baby. But they're, you know, like a quarter piece. So you can buy two lemons. Okay. And you have a delightful, very, very light dessert after your pasta meal. Sounds easy enough for my mom to make. It, it would be. Three ingredients. Literally three ingredients. Literally. There you go. Anything else?